What's up, everybody, and welcome to Word Therapy. We are back. Listen, I've missed you guys. Grateful for the opportunity to share with you tonight. Since this is the first time in a while, let's do a check in. Let me know how you are doing in the chat. I need you to be honest. If, if things are well, we certainly praise God for that. But even if they are not, we're yet glad that you are here to talk about it, to share it. And more importantly, it helps me to know what I need to be praying about. So let me know if there are any, any prayer concerns you may have. I, I like to often go back in the chat and, and collect those prayer concerns so that I can pray for you during my prayer time throughout the week. Listen, I hope you all are stiving, still living in the glow of the resurrection season. I pray uh, that resurrection is still happening for you in so many powerful ways that you are experiencing restoration of relationships and not the kind that you've had previously, but the kind and the quality of relationship that you have never had a relationship with Jesus Christ and with other people that takes you to a whole new level. Listen, if you don't mind, why don't you just greet one another as people are coming in? Let them know that you are excited to share with them in this experience on tonight. Listen, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, Word Therapy is a virtual teaching experience that uses principles straight out of the manuscripts of scripture, straight out of the Word of God. We're seeking to bring about healing application in the lives of God's people because we all have a choice in life. Either we cooperate with what is causing us to be sick and unwell, or we can passionately pursue that which can heal. And I believe that there is a whole lot of healing that takes place when we gather to hear and to study God's word. And that's exactly what we set out to do tonight and each and every night that we gather. So before we jump into the lesson, I need you to help me to help other people. If you haven't already, I know we are out of practice. So go ahead and press that like button. When you press that like button, you are helping me to help other people because it helps us to get into that algorithm so that this can show up in the feeds of those who would happen to stumble upon this teaching. Listen, if you're not subscribed to this channel, I want to encourage you to do that also, because when you are subscribed, you get a notification anytime we add content to this channel. And I don't want you to miss all of the great and good things that God has for you. Now that we set the house in order tonight, we are jumping into a new teaching series that I'm so excited about. But before we jump in, let's go ahead and set the table. Would you pray with me? God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this marvelous day. Lord, this is the day that you have made and we are so grateful that you saw fit to allow us to come into it. Thank you, O oh God, that you have been right there with us throughout our day, that you have allowed us to get through what we had to go through. And God, at the end of this day, you've allowed us to gather here to sit at your feet and to learn from you that which you would impart to your people. God, bless us on tonight with the healing application that only you can provide. I pray, O oh God, that we will be changed, that we will be challenged, that we will be transformed as we go through this series and that we will be helped in such a way that our lives will bring you glory and honor. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen. All right. Are you ready to jump into the word tonight? All right, let's jump on in it. Tonight we are, as I said, beginning a new series entitled Filter. I'll explain what that means in just a few moments. For some of you, it's going to be new information. It's new thought. It's new language, but it's going to bless you in a special way. So I need you to be engaged and involved. 
Make sure you have a pen and paper, take notes. I believe this is going to be helpful. So let's jump in. In the book, Emotional Intelligence, the author Daniel Goleman talks about how emotions are born. Emotions, for those who don't know, are triggered through our senses. So based on what we see, based on what we hear, based on what we feel or touch, it triggers an emotion. Now, it and of itself is not an emotion, but it triggers an emotion. There are these electrical signals that are sent through your cells based on touch, based on hearing, based on seeing, based on tasting. And the destination of those signals is your brain. Those signals typically enter into the brain right at the base of your brain, right where the spinal cord meets the brain. And so those signals enter and you're triggered. You see something, you hear something, you smell something, you feel something. So let me recap it. There are these electrical signals that are sent through your cells and it enters your brain right at the base where the spine meets the brain and it starts with your senses. Y'all got it? I'm trying to keep it really simple. Okay, after that, it goes to a place called the limbic system. The limbic system, L-I-M-B-I-C. Well, the limbic system is the place where emotions are born. The limbic system in your brain is the place of feelings. It is the place where you experience your emotions. Now, I want to share with you, first of all, tonight, that your emotions are feelings. You may hear somebody say, well, I, I just feel loved. Or, or, you know, somebody may say something like, I, I'm feeling insecure. A anxiety is an emotion. Fear is an emotion. Peace is an emotion. Gratitude is an emotion. You might tell your boo, hey boo, I, I just feel comfortable when I'm with you. I just feel like you've got it. That's an emotion, that, that's a feeling. Anger is an emotion, it's a feeling. And I can go on and on and on. All of these are emotions, they, they are feelings. Drop that in the chat, just say feelings. Let me give you something else, watch this. Emotions, are what make you human. It's what separates you from, from other forms of life. So the mere fact that you have feelings basically lets us know you are human, that you are alive. If you don't have feelings, then that means you are not alive and we need to schedule your funeral. So one thing we have to understand is that it is okay to have emotions. It's, it's okay to have vulnerability. It's okay to have feelings. In fact, I want to submit to you, when you read the scriptures, God meets us at the point of our feelings. The psalmist says in Psalm 116, verses 1 through 2, let's look at this. I love the Lord. For he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. That oftentimes it is at the place of brokenness that we have the greatest encounter with God. That's why a lot of men have repressed feelings and have trouble connecting with God. When, when I was a boy, and if you, were, if you would start showing feelings, they would say, boy, quit all that crying. But that wasn't a good thing because God gave me tears to cry. God gave me tears to express emotions. Tears are therapeutic, right? And so, so it's okay to feel, it's, it's okay to cry. That's what makes you human. Please help me get this message across in the chat. Say, just be human. Just be human. 
emotions make you human. You know, some situations the like will make you angry, right? I mean, when you look at the news and, and see some of the craziness that's going on in our country and in our world, that'll make you angry. I mean, you've been there for somebody and they lie and, and they don't show up for you. That, that'll make you angry. Or you've been working for somebody and they're not respecting you. That might make you angry as well. Or if you're not, if you're in a marriage and, and, and you're not getting the kind of respect that you ought to receive from your spouse. And not only your spouse, but now your kids are not respecting you. Now it's viral, so to speak. I mean, it's so bad, not even the dog or the cat will respect you. <laughs> now that's bad. <laughs> that, that'll do something to you. Come on now. And I want to submit to you that there's nothing wrong with admitting that you have feelings. Why? Because you're human. It's okay to be human. And it's okay to have feelings. Are y'all with me so far? So these emotions are born in the limbic system. Once it moves from the limbic system, it now travels to just behind the front of your forehead, which is called the frontal lobe. The emotion travels to the frontal lobe that, that that's right behind your forehead. The frontal lobe is the place where decisions are made. It is the place where you react to the emotion that was born in the limbic system. It's the place where those emotions are regulated. See, the whole point of this teaching is this. Emotions are natural. They're part of who we are. There's nothing wrong with having feelings. The issue is when you don't know how to manage the feelings that you are having. See, the problem with so many of us is this. Instead of, instead of managing the emotion, the emotion is managing you. And consequently, it is causing you to react and do things you ought not be doing. Because you have not learned the art and the skill of how to manage the emotions you are having. The question is not should you have feelings, but do you know how to manage your feelings? The question is not should you have emotions, but do you know how to manage the emotions that you are having? Do you know how to manage your feelings when the spirit of insecurity pops up? Do you know how to manage that anger? It's okay to be angry, but the Bible says in Ephesians chapter four, verse 26, let me show you this in your anger. Do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Do you know how to manage the particular feelings that you're having? Because when you don't know how to manage your emotions and your emotions are managing you, it will bring a whole lot of trouble into your life. And the frontal lobe is where you begin to make those kinds of decisions. Now, let me just kind of help you understand why you did what you might consider now some dumb stuff at the age of 16. Because at the age of 16, your frontal lobe is undeveloped. In fact, your frontal lobe is not fully developed until around the age of 25. So what that means is you are more likely to make crazy decisions when you are young. You do things you ought not be doing because the place that is supposed to help you with your decision making and the place where you're so supposed to be considering the consequences of your behavior, it is undeveloped. So all the parents trying to figure out your teenager, that's why they act like that at 16. That's some of the reason. And that's why some of y'all acted the way you acted at the age of 16. Now, here's the big issue. The big issue is when you're 45 and yet you're still making decisions like you're 16. When you're 35 and still making decisions like that, y'all, I'm trying to tell you, this is why this is happening. It's because of undevelopment. I know y'all don't like it, but, but I'm telling you the truth. 
That shouldn't be. You shouldn't be making the same kinds of silly decisions at 45 that you made when you were 16. So what we want to do is talk about this whole idea of not allowing your emotions to manage you. What I want to suggest to you is that you have to manage the emotion. You're human, so that means there's nothing wrong with your feelings. But you can't be dominated by your feelings. You can't allow the feelings to manage you. You have to know how to manage your feelings. Am I making sense? Just let me know in the chat. Now, an emotionally healthy person knows how to manage what they are feeling. They know how to manage it in a mature way. People who are immature, they do not know how to manage their emotions maturely. I mean, they are reckless with it. They, they have all kinds of outbursts at the wrong time. They engage in juvenile behaviors. And you have, you, you have to get to the place where you understand that to be emotionally healthy, it means I can handle my feelings maturely. Because this is what you have to understand. You ready? There is a connection between spiritual maturity and emotional health. Let me say it again. There is a connection between spiritual maturity and emotional health. You have to understand that you cannot be spiritually mature and emotionally childish. And if you are emotionally childish, I want to suggest that there are some things that God is going to hold back from you. Because just like David, he cannot give you the throne until you grow up emotionally. Because you can't get on the throne acting juvenile. Did you hear what I said? You can't get on the throne acting childish. This is not Game of Thrones or House of Dragon. No, if you're going to sit on the throne of your life, you have to be able to make sound, mature decisions. Hear me tonight. Some of our problem is not the devil, it's us. Sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. But you've got to get to the place where you learn how to manage the feelings that you are having. So the question you ought to raise is, are you being managed or are you in control of your feelings? You have to get clarity on that question. Now, when this is not happening, I want to suggest in my illustration for this particular series that something is wrong with your filter. Y'all know what a filter is, right? We use filters for all kinds of things. We filter our air. We filter our water. We filter the oil in our cars. Even in the human body, your lungs serve as filters. Your kidneys are filters. Some of you all drink filtered coffee. All of us are familiar with filters. And I want to suggest that the same is true with our emotions. If you are a person who cannot manage your emotions, but rather your emotions are managing you, there's something wrong with your filter. So let me ask you tonight, how is your filter? How are you responding to the emotions that you are having? When it comes to your emotions, the first thing I want to get across to you is how you hear determines how you interpret. Don't miss that. How you hear information will determine how you interpret that information. Because based on the interpretation, it will determine how you process that information, which will influence your response. And your response reveals your level of emotional health. Let me say it again. How you hear determines how you interpret. How you interpret determines how you process. How you process will influence your response. And your response will reveal whether or not you are emotionally healthy, which means I'm able to manage my emotions maturely. 
That's what it means to be emotionally healthy. I can manage my emotions maturely. Are you still with me? Now, what I'm getting ready to give you is critical to this whole series. If you get this, it will really bless you. So the first thing I want to give you tonight is the importance of cleaning your filter. So what do we need in order to clean our filters? Here's the first thing. Self awareness. Drop that in the chat. Say self awareness. Self awareness is the ability to accurately understand your own emotions. You have to get to the place where you understand your own emotions, your own feelings. You have to have ownership over that. Now, how many of you have ever seen the iceberg illustration? Let me, let me show you this. Now, if you're looking at the part of the iceberg that is above the water, all you really see is 15% of the iceberg. 85%, the majority of the iceberg is under the water. That 85%, what, what, what you can see, I want to suggest to you that some of the confrontation that you are having with individuals is just the tip of the problem. That most of the stuff that you're dealing with in your marriage, most of the issues you're having with a coworker, most of the stuff you're dealing with in ministry, that's not all of the problem. It's just the surface of an issue. It's, it's the tip of an issue. And what we typically do is we begin to deal with the surface issues, not realizing that the real problem, it lies beneath the surface. And if you cut the grass, it's only a matter of time before the grass grows back. So you have to, to get to the place where you deal with what's underneath. It is very critical. You have to get to the place where you deal with what is underneath the surface. Because when you see somebody getting angry and all on Facebook telling all their issues, that's just a tip. I can't believe that she did that. And I, I wish she would. If she don't know me, I bet not see her at the mall. I don't care. If I see her, I'm going to let her know who I am and where I came from because you don't know me like that. I'm going to let her have it. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's juvenile. Are y'all hearing me? That is juvenile. Not only that, but another way of being juvenile is to act like you're okay with something when you know you're not. And you do so at the expense of your own emotional well-being. And so you hold it inside because you don't want to ruffle any feathers. You want to keep the peace. You want everybody to be happy. And everybody is happy, but it's at your expense. And you pretend that you are with a thing, but on the inside, you are full of resentment. And you're like, I wish I would have done this. That's an issue. You can't just suppress how you feel. You can't avoid it. You can't go and get in a corner and get in the closet and just think that everything is going to go away. Because when you get out of the closet, Freddy Krueger is going to be right there. <laughs> I'm trying to help y'all with this. It's about self-awareness. And in order to be self-aware, you have to go deep. Now, let me help you out with something. Your history influences the way you hear, which determines how you process so what, 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 what most of us don't realize is that you cannot go forward until you go back. Let me give you some Bible. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. Don't miss what it says. It says they become new. 
which means there is a process that is happening. They aren't all new, but they are becoming new. And I know that they are not all new because Paul says in Romans chapter 7, verse 21, look at this. When I want to do good, in other words, when I want to do the right thing, evil is right there with me. What I'm trying to share with you is that your history will haunt you. And what people don't realize is that if you don't bury your history, your history will try to bury you. Because watch this. When you leave Egypt, I promise you, Egypt is going to try to hunt you down. And that's why you're going to have to bury your history so that it will not bury you. And you do that by going back. You have to go back to your history because when you go back to your history, you're going to see how the people in your life handled emotions. You're going to see how your mother handled emotions. You're going to see how your father handled emotions. You're going to see how your uncles and aunts and grandparents handled emotions. And whether you realize it or not, all of that stuff is like Velcro to you. All of those authority figures and all of those models and all of their words spoken over you and in front of you, their examples have influenced the way you deal with your emotions. And yet we're trying to go forward and we go to this conference and read that book. And we try to go over here and we go over there and it just keeps popping up. You cut it off and then you get more weeds growing right back. You cut it off and then you get more weeds. It's a temporary fix. The only way to really solve the problem is you have to uproot that thing. Come on, help somebody in the chat. Tell them you got to uproot it. You have to come to the season in your life where you declare, I will not cope with this anymore. I'm going to be cured from this in the mighty name of Jesus. When you go back in your history, it may help you to understand why you have the feelings that you have. Why you have outbursts like you do. It may help you understand why you go to drinking when you're stressed. Because that's what you saw growing up. It'll help you understand why you go to smoking when you're stressed. Why you walk and pace and, and stress like you do. Why you sweat under pressure. And you have to go back. Because the issue is not what you can see. The issue is what lies beneath. You know, a long time ago, very early in my ministry, family came to see me and said, Pastor D, hey, you've been amazing. Your ministry has taught us so much. My family has grown under your ministry. And guess what? My daughter is 10 and she beats me to church. She wants to be in church to listen to your word because because she can understand the word that you're preaching. I want to thank you so much because under your leadership, I understand tithing uh, under your leadership. I understand faith better and I'm, and I'm saved and I'm serving in the community. But I want you to know that our season is up and we're getting ready to leave the church. Well, at this particular moment, mind you, this was a long time ago. Something on the inside begins to well up in me because they were saying, I'm getting ready to leave the church. We appreciate you, Pastor. But I heard rejection. I heard, oh, you're not a good leader. I heard, oh, you can't preach. You can't teach. You're not good enough. Now, they never said that. But because of my history, I was hearing it that way. So I began to go deeper up under the water line to see why did I respond that way? Well, I began to look at my life, began to look at what's called my genogram, my family history. And I, and I began to discover a couple of things. Number one, everything about my self-worth growing up was built around achievement. That unless I was doing well in school or or doing well in sports, that I was invisible. At least that that's what I thought. So I was never the most naturally talented person, but I was a hard worker. 
And so I was always working to get the approval of my parents, my peers, my coaches and whoever else was in my life, because I felt like if I didn't do that, then I wouldn't be visible. Now, this was my issue. It wasn't that my parents and others didn't already love me for me, but my low self-esteem caused me to be that way because I really didn't love myself. When I was growing up, you know, I, I was kind of nerdy. I, I still am. <laughs> Glasses real thick, acne, uh, super skinny, all of that. And I, and I didn't feel good about myself. And I felt rejected because whenever my hard work wasn't noticed, I felt a lack of acceptance. So in that moment, because of my history, I was triggered so that when the person said, Pastor D, I'm leaving the church, because I was not emotionally healthy, I heard something they didn't even say. It's kind of like the wife and the husband who got into a fight. She was like, you know, that wasn't smart of you to go out and buy a brand new car in the middle of winter and the heat doesn't work in the house. So he was like, how are you going to call me stupid? Now, she never called him stupid. What she was really saying is it is irresponsible for you to be driving on dubs with limo tent. <laughs> and we live in Chicago and we don't have heat in the house. But because he was not healthy, come on, y'all, he heard what she said from a deficit. He heard from his pain. He heard from that uh, particular place. And the reason why I was dealing with the family that way is because there was a history that I had not dealt with. Now, I want to submit to you. You got to deal with your history. You have to confront your history. You have to focus on your history. You have to deal with your history. And so I dealt with that. You know how I dealt with it? I dealt with it by slowing down and having a meeting with me. Because we meet with everybody else. We have time for for all of these other things, but we never take time to have a meeting with ourselves. Because as long as you're moving around, you'll see the problem in everybody else except you. But when you sit down and spend some time with God and reflect and pray, God will show you just how jacked up you are. <laughs> See, see, when you read Isaiah chapter six, y'all remember Isaiah chapter six. Uh, let me show you this. It, it reads in the year that King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on the throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. Verse two above him were seraphim. Each with six wings, with two wings, they covered their faces, with two, they covered their feet and with two, they were flying and they were calling to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. That's Isaiah chapter 6. But go back to chapter 5. I want you to go back and read chapter 5 when you get a chance. Because in chapter 5, he was saying, woe unto them. He was saying, I can't believe y'all are drinking. I can't believe y'all are smoking. I can't believe y'all lying. I can't believe y'all are doing all of this bad stuff. But in chapter six, when he saw the Lord, it was not woe unto them. It was woe unto me. And the problem with many of us is always other people. And the reason it's other people is because you haven't seen God. Because when you get before God, you will have to get honest and say, it's not you. It's me standing in the need of prayer. 
Lord, help me tonight. Lord, 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 work on me. Search my heart. And if you find anything in me, remove it out of me. Help somebody in the chat. Tell somebody you have to spend time with you. You know why you haven't spent time with you? You're on social media too much. You know, everybody's business on social media except your business. You can't spend time with you because you're just scrolling and, and you're scrolling and, and you're scrolling. You're on Instagram, you're on Twitter, you're on TikTok, all of it. And you're spending all this time focusing on what other people are doing and you don't spend time with you. Reflecting, praying, meditating. Are you hearing me tonight? You have to make certain that you spend some time with you. And then most of us, when we have that kind of pain in our life, we try to medicate it through other avenues. We go to eating ice cream, not realizing meditation is medication. Did y'all hear what I just said? Meditation is medication. Be still so that God can show you who you are. So that you can understand why you handle things the way you handle them. Let me give you the next one. Self-management. Self-management is the ability to control your behavior. It is knowing when to act and when not to act. Management. Like I've been saying, you're human. And because you're human, you're going to have emotion. How do you manage those emotions? That's the issue. And y'all see it all the time. You see how people handle emotions. I mean, sometimes it's just ridiculous how we handle emotions. Some people, when they get mad, they get their toys and they're like, I'm leaving. And people who will always run away from stuff have a spirit of withdrawal. That's what juveniles do. When things don't go the way they want them to go, they get their toys and they leave. I'm done with you. My mama told me you weren't going to be about nothing anyhow. That's juvenile. Are y'all hearing me? Because it takes maturity to stay and deal with the situation in a mature kind of way. It's juvenile when you're having a conversation with somebody and they don't agree with you and you start stomping your feet and all that kind of stuff. And I don't believe she's doing that. And here's what you need to get. People have opinions. Let me have my own perspective. And you have to get to the place where if my perspective is not your perspective, that you can be OK with that. Am I making sense? And a lot of times because you don't have control over a particular decision, you just get reckless. You're having this outburst and that outburst. I mean, come on, y'all. You ought to be upset. You ought to be upset if somebody told you they were going to work with you in ministry and they haven't shown up or, or when they do show up, they're late. You ought to be upset about that. But where you are wrong and proving that you have an inability to manage emotions is the next time you see them, you don't speak to them. That's childish. It is childish to have a problem with somebody and to be sitting next to them and you act like you don't have a problem. That's childish. What you should do is say, hey, can we talk next week? And when you talk to them, be direct, be honest, and be respectful. It's childish to be walking around having something against somebody and you don't talk about it. Smiling in your face. In the neighborhood I grew up, they call that a fake. You need Bible for that. Uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Let's look at this. I'm going to show you a, a powerful prescription. It says... If your brother or sister sins against you, go to them and point out the fault. You see that? So I want you to understand that a lot of times we don't handle our emotions well. You know, one of the things I want to share with you, 
is that over the last three years, <laughs> that whole cliche that says, if it ain't one thing, it's another, has been the commentary of my life. It's been so many things, ministry, professionally, personally, and y'all don't have a clue <laughs> all I've had to face. You know why? Because I don't look like what I've been through. Mm. Well, let me say that again. I don't look like what I've been through because I've learned how to manage what I'm going through. I have learned not to allow my emotions to manage me, but I'm going to manage my emotions because this is what I've learned about emotions. Can I expose emotions? When your emotions manage you, it will put a fog in your face. When there's a fog in your face, you no longer think you have an option. And when you no longer think you have an option, you don't think you're going to get out of that situation. But when you manage your emotion and God is your source, then you know whatever God sends to you, God has already created an escape route for how you're going to get out of that situation. I am in the Bible. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. I'm going to show it to you. It says no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide. Here it is a way out so that you can endure it. God will provide a way out. And I know it because God did it for me. And I know I'm not the only one. Would you go ahead and be a, a, a digital witness tonight and let some folk know that I went through something, but God got me out of it so well that I don't even look like what I went through. And that's why I've decided that I'm going to bless the Lord, not sometimes, not at times that are convenient for me, but I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. Is there a witness in the chat? See, that's why the devil is looking at you and he's puzzled. He's scratching his head because he thought what you went through was going to cause you to resign. He thought that what you went through was going to cause you to wave the white flag. He thought that what you went through was going to cause you to surrender. But he doesn't know that you are a fighter. You may be troubled on every side, but you're not perplexed. You know that God is able. You have to manage what you're going through. You have to be hanging on the cross and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Anybody can forgive folks who love them. But can you forgive your haters? You've got to manage that. Quit looking like what you're going through. See, when you manage your emotions, then you will tell your emotions that what you are in, it's seasonal. Life is not linear, it's circular. It's not linear. Things won't always be bad. After a while, good things will come back your way. When you begin to manage your emotions, you don't trip because you know that eventually it's going to get better. It's going to get better because every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. You have all of these gifts. You have the gift of the word. You have the gift of the church. Yet something is inhibiting growth and maturity in your life. With all the hours some of us have clocked in church. There ought to be profound marks of transformation. But what we fail to realize is that there is a connection between your emotional health 
and spiritual maturity. You're human. You're going to have feelings. There are things that are going to trigger you. But you have to learn how to manage that. Because that's what's blocking your growth. That's what's blocking your maturity. If you're going to grow spiritually, you must also become healthy emotionally. Let's stop there and let me pray for you. God, we admit to you that there have been times in our life where we have not acted or risen to the level of maturity that we ought to. And oftentimes that's because we have not had control over our emotions. We've not managed those emotions well. And so God, right now we ask that you would begin to allow a process to take place in us whereby we begin to hear things in the way that we're supposed to hear them. That when someone says something to us, we will not walk away with a faulty interpretation, but that we will begin to clean our filter so that we can understand all those things in our history that have caused us to interpret situations in the way that we have. God, we want to be emotionally healthy because ultimately we want to be spiritually mature. We're going to honor you with our lives and give you glory by what it is that we, we do in this life that allows your name to be made manifest and, and to be made big in the lives of other people. And so God, we thank you in advance for how you're maturing us, for how you're growing us, for how you're developing us into all that you want us to be. Clean our filter tonight and we'll be made the better because of it. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen. Listen, I thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, this has uh, been wonderful getting back uh, into the saddle and connecting with you uh, once again in this word therapy uh, experience. I hope that this teaching has been helpful to you. Listen, I want you to know tonight that you can become healthy in your emotions. And you can do that as you begin to be honest about your history. You can do that as you become more self-aware because your history impacts how you hear. How you hear determines how you interpret. How you interpret influences your process. And your response reveals if you are emotionally healthy. It's by going back to retrieve in the spirit of Sankofa and then moving forward that puts you on the road to managing your feelings in a mature way. But you have to be honest with yourself. If you've been acting childish and immature, be honest about that. Because God is attracted to honesty. And it's only when you're honest that God can begin to heal that place. The next several weeks, our goal is to help get under the water to those below the surface issues that will help you to get the healing that you need, that I need, that we need. I pray that this journey awakens us. Some of us need to be awakened to the fact that we need professional counseling to unpack a lot of the stuff that we have placed below and buried uh, underneath the surface. You need that. I know you've been saying you and Jesus can get through this and you're right. But maybe part of the plan of Jesus is for you to hook up with a therapist so that you can begin to address those issues. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, that safety comes in a multitude of counseling. It's time to clean the filter. Got to do that. I got to raise up out of here, but we're going to go ahead and put that lower third on the screen. We want you to uh, take this opportunity now to sow into what has been good soil for you. That which has provided increase in your life. Thank you in advance for your faithfulness. For many of you, this is the place where you found connection and the place where you tithe. And, and we are grateful for that. Thank God for those of you who, even while we have been away, you continue to sow into 
this ministry. I am grateful for your consistency in giving, for your generosity as we invest in the ministry to give you experiences like this. Listen, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this. Somebody uh, you know uh, needs this to hear tonight, needs to hear this teaching, and you help us when you like, when you subscribe, and you share to get the message out. All right, family, I love you in the Lord. I love you to life. Thanks so much for being a part of Word Therapy. We'll see you next Tuesday, same time, same channel. Be blessed. Have a wonderful week.